All right, Sean. I do agree with Alvin. Master Chef is more than just steak and potatoes. Sean, an auto worker from London, Ontario, also wants to change his life. Been in automotive for uh, 26 years now, but I'm meant to cook food for people, make them happy, and make them smile. Who the hell doesn't love steak? My food dream is to own my own taco food truck. My wife, she's gonna be right there with me, helping me. You're beautiful. This is the love of my life. You guys can try that bacon. I love bacon almost as much as I love my wife. <laughs> When I get this white apron tonight, my dreams start coming true. It's time. What's your name? My name's Sean Hickey. What are you making today? A pan-seared prime rib steak, a spiral deep-fried potato. That's gonna be rolled in some maple bacon sea salt. Five minutes starts now. So when did you discover a passion for cooking? Fresh out of high school, I uh, got a job as a line cook. Then I got an opportunity to go work in automotive, and I've been there over 20 years. Do you enjoy that work? Not at all. At least he's honest. <laughs> <laughs> Are you turning a mushroom there? Yes, I am. That is a lost wow. art, my friend, a lost art. <laughs> wow. Anything else you can cook, Sean? Uh, yeah, I can cook chicken, fish, cook game, sushi. I can bake, not as well as my wife, but I can hold my own. But I'm a steak and potato kind of guy. Why are you here? I want to own my own food truck. I want this in the worst kind of way. This is definitely what you said you were, a meat and potatoes type of guy. You got it. What's the color that you were looking for? Medium rare. Are you sure it's medium rare? I'm hoping so. Awesome. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Delicious. Tender, juicy, but needs a little more salt. But overall, the meat is, is delicious. Hi, Sean. Hello, Chef. This is your standard meat and potato, right? I can tell you this steak is nicely done. Thank you. Potato, it's just not crispy. It's steak and potato. You want to elevate it, make a nice sauce, bechamel sauce, a bernese sauce, then we will be impressed. Interesting uh, plating approach. An older uh, school style, maybe matches the same era as the turn mushrooms. Nicely done on that. Beautiful and tender. But as I think Claudio pointed out, a little under seasoned, huh? A little bit, yeah. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Well, Sean, I think you have a lot to learn. Master Chef is more than steak potatoes. So I'm a no. Sean, the steak was nicely cooked. Presentation just a little bit too plain Jane. It didn't tip the scales enough for me to say a yes. It has to be a no, I'm afraid. Sorry, Sean. All right, Sean. I do agree with Alvin. Master Chef is more than just steak and potatoes. But I see something in you. I think you have more than just steak and potatoes. Am I right? You know it. Are there a few flaws? Yes, but we can smooth those out. So I'm a yes. You're gonna get a second chance to cook again. I can't wait to see what you do next. So go tell your family the good news. I live to see another day. I got another chance. This is not over yet. Our last home cook of the day is Terry, a Nigerian immigrant from Edmonton, Alberta. I came to Canada six years ago. It's amazing. There's no way else I'd rather be in the world. 
I'm currently a PhD law student, but cooking has always been my passion. Almost all my life I've done things to please my parents and there's nothing wrong with that, they deserve it. But I feel it's time I do something for Terry. And Terry loves cooking, Terry loves baking, Terry is good at this. <laughs> Canada gives you the opportunity to be who you want to be, and I'm going to do all it takes to win MasterChef Canada. What's your name? My name is Terry. And what are you making today? I'm making a spice pumpkin roulade with a pecan cream cheese frosting. Where are you from, Terry? I'm originally from Nigeria, but I'm now based in Edmonton, Canada. I've been here for the past six years. I'm a PhD law student, but I love cooking. I love baking more than cooking, and I'm... Sorry, rewind. You're a law student. I'm a PhD law student. PhD? Yeah. Yes, wow. I am. It's incredible. Thank and you, you want to be a chef? I believe you get the greatest joy from what you love doing. And cooking is what I love doing. Would your parents share the same passion you have? My dad was my greatest supporter. Unfortunately, he died last year. But I know if he was alive now, I'm sure he'll be proud today of seeing me following my dreams and my passion. If this tastes as good as it sounds, you're going to be the one to watch. You know that. I know that. They're all scared out there. They're all scared because you're a lawyer. <laughs> Are you done? I'm done. Walk me through this. These are the truffles that are... The uh, pumpkin pecan truffles with a little bit, a little bit of maple syrup. This is a... Uh, I'm sorry. Why are you so nervous right now? I want this so bad. Everyone comes in and says, I want this so bad, but... I want this so bad. This is... Do you have three degrees, right? I have three law degrees, and I'm on my fourth one. On your fourth one? Yes, I and am. And how old are you? I'm 33. And you're a little worried right now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. This is beautiful. This is what I've been looking for. Thank you. <laughs> if it tastes as good as it looks... It, it's going to taste amazing. <laughs> then take a deep breath. <sighs> Wow, the spices in there, incredible. Thank you, it's my own special blend of spices. I taste, is there all spice in there, a clove? There's a, an eighth of a teaspoon of clove, <laughs> yeah. I taste that, it's fantastic, like. Thank you, thank you. Wow. Hi, chef. How you doing? I'm just nervous and anxious, but I. <sighs> do I make you nervous? You do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's a well-known fact that I'm not a big fan of desserts. And we did dessert here. So is this going to change my mind? I really want to impress you. I tell you, if I'm disappointed, I may have to sue you. <laughs> OK, let's go with the cake. Very nice flavors. Thank and you. And you said not too sweet. Thank you. I tell you what, Terry. Yes, chef. Today, I won't sue you. Thank you, chef. Hi there, Terry. Hi, Chef. You pleased with the way this turned out? I strive for perfection in all I do. You are picky, huh? <laughs> that is a great quality in a chef. Thank you, Chef. I get up front a little hit of that lemon, which is nice and clean. And then you get that aroma as if you're walking through a spice market sort of wafting through the air, just, it's just very light and subtle. You have, I think, a great sensibility when it comes to flavors, and certainly with spices. Thank you, Chef. Yeah, I think the presentation, it works. It's, it's, it's a little bit predictable on the presentation side. That's something I think uh, needs a little okay. attention. Thank you, Terry. Terry? Yes, Chef? The dessert that you presented today... Yes, sir. And I speak for my two colleagues here when I say this, is the best dish we've tasted so far in this competition. Oh. It is outstanding. Oh, my goodness! So I've got something for you. <laughs> Come on up here and get your apron. Oh, my Come goodness! Come on up. Oh, Come on up here. Goodness. That's it. Look at that. You may have to get rid of all those law books and replace them with cookbooks. 
There we go. So I'm guessing you're pretty happy. I'm happy. What a great way to finish. I like to see that. He's over the moon. It's going to be a great competition. Top oh, 14 MasterChef Canada. You guys better watch out. <laughs> The thing that scares me the most is the shrimp. I've never done the shrimp. Take a look at Robin there. She seems to be taking her time and trying to find that vein. I don't think she has the urgency. I mean, I she's moving really, really slow. It is 100% chaos down there. Pressure's getting to everybody. This is where the rubber hits the road. My strategy is to do the things that I think will be the quickest first. Being a lawyer, I'm used to working under pressure. And I think that's going to really set me apart from the other home cooks. I'm fully zoned into my station. I can't afford to look at anyone else and see what they're doing. Everybody is freaking out about this challenge. Calm down, Jacqueline. My strategy is to start with what I can do the fastest and work my way down. I don't want to be an accountant for the rest of my life. My ultimate food dream would be to own my own farm, where I can raise my own heritage variety vegetables and pigs. I need to prove to the judges that I belong here and that I want to be here, and I do. Well, the key with the chicken is that you cut through the joints, yeah. not through the bones. You splinter that bone, it'll be awful. Look at Sean Hickey. My knife skills are pretty awesome. Breaking down a chicken, easy peasy. Yes, baby. That's what I'm talking about. He is the guy to watch right now. My food dream is to own my own taco food truck. Being an automotive worker is not what I'm meant to do. I'm meant to cook food for people and make them happy and make them smile. Ten minutes. You have ten minutes left. I'm a little bit worried about my knife skills right now. It's sort of what I am depending on to take me through this competition. I cook like this every day at home. I always have my kids with me, and I'm always trying to get things done on time. And I think I'm doing a really good job. I'm a teacher. My food dream is to teach working moms and dads who are busy ways to make food interesting for their children. I want perfection on those apples. Yes, chef. Julian peppers. I want every single piece to be the same and thinly sliced. I'm worried about finishing these peppers. I just need to make sure they're uniform in shape. The thing that scares me the most is the shrimp. I've never done the shrimp. Take a look at Robin there. She seems to be taking her time and trying to find that vein. I don't think she has the urgency. I mean, I she's moving really, really slow. The shrimp are going better than I thought. It is definitely important for me to have my food look perfect. I'm a makeup artist. I am good at making things look beautiful and precise. I'm not going to fall apart, and I'm going to get that apron. You have five minutes left. Come on, guys. You can do it. Come on, I'm a brand manager in the fashion industry. There's so many similarities of fashion and food. When you first don that fashion-forward cape, it makes you feel satisfied. And food, it's the same. Two minutes, you have two minutes left. Come on. Medic, quick, 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 quick. I'm not seeing enough on the board. Some of you will be going home. I'm just making sure all my eggs are done. I'm a baker, so I should do well on that. 30 seconds. You only have 30 seconds left. Sean Hickey, look how, look how fast he's doing the eggs. I got this. Apron's coming my way. Let's push, guys. Let's go. This is amazing. Look at the speed and the drive. I am going to make this happen. I'm staying. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, guys. Come on, Julia. Matthew, come on, buddy. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands up! 18 of the country's best home cooks are battling for a spot in MasterChef Canada's top 14. I see that apron up there and I know my name is on it. There's nothing that's going to stop me from getting it. They have just completed a grueling mise en place skills test and the results are mixed. Oh my God, I didn't finish. I've looked at every single person's board and I think I have a pretty good shot. That was a really tough challenge. We're now gonna take one final look to see how you all did. I'm thinking I did pretty good. My plan was to do the best separation of eggs I can do and the best apples. It's quality versus quantity. I choose quality.
the judges are looking for perfection, but I'm hoping that this is good enough. Well, this was really interesting and very revealing. We saw some cooks that were very fast, but they weren't able to give us the quality we're looking for. I don't really know how I performed. Everyone did different elements. Some people perfected their eggs. I see some missing pieces from other people's stations. It can go either way. And I just want to know whether or not I did enough to earn that apron. If they can't do this, they won't stand a chance with what's coming next. During the challenge, we watched you very closely. And based on what we saw, we're going to call some home cooks up to the front. John Hickey. How do you think you did? I think I did pretty good. Thing is, we agree. Your Misan Plus just earned you a spot in the top 14. Your mise en place was hands down the best in the room. Congratulations. Come up and grab your apron. You got it. <sighs> Great job. Thank you. I just made top 14 Masters of Canada. Are you kidding me? Woo! Yeah! I'm here. I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. I'm here to stay. Get ready. Get ready. Now for the rest of you. If you hear your name, I want you to come up to the front. Julia, Matthew, and Jacqueline. My hands are definitely shaking because of how badly I want this. I need this apron. Domingo, Alan, and Kendra, please come to the front. This determines who stays and who goes, and I want to be the one to stay. I want this more than anybody else here. There's one final group of home cooks to call to the front. Robin, Ernie, and Vanessa. I feel totally anxious. This is my second chance right now. I don't want to go home. This challenge was designed to show us who has the essential skills to make it in this competition. And we've had to make some tough decisions. Robin, Ernie, and Vanessa, you all love cooking. But sadly, we do not see the skills that we are looking for. I feel disappointed leaving the competition this early. I'm still going to keep cooking. This is definitely the best thing that's ever happened to me my entire life. There are now two groups standing before us. But only one of the two groups will head up to the gallery and take their rightful spot to join the top 14 in this competition. The adrenaline is rushing. I see that apron on top of the table with my name on it. I'm gonna get that apron. I've fought so hard to be here, and I am not ready to go home right now. The three home cooks that displayed the most talent and tenacity are... Julia, Matthew, and Jacqueline. You three had great knife skills and attention to detail. Thank you. Domingo, Alan, and Kendra, you brought a great deal to this competition. But I'm sorry, it's the end of the road. Goodbye and good luck. Thank you. I'm gonna continue cooking. Nothing's gonna stop that. <laughs> I love cooking. I'm only gonna be upwards from here. No one can keep Domingo down, you know it. <laughs> Julia, Matthew, and Jacqueline, come up and get your apron! Yeah! <laughs> putting on the apron feels like putting on a princess crown. <laughs> Getting my white apron is the best thing that has happened to me. Top 14, baby! It's definitely made me very proud. I've proven that I deserve to be here. <laughs> So refresh my memory. You're not a baker, right? Never made a tart in my life. Here. Dr. Sean. Chef. 
What are you making? Today I'm going to try baking. I'm not a big baker, but we're going to make a tart with a maple syrup cream filling. I'm from Quebec, so that's uh, why I'm choosing to use the maple syrup. Do you like maple tarts? I absolutely have ma love maple syrup. I've never had a maple tart. Let, 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 let me get this. You have never eaten a maple tart. You have never baked, and you got to make me a maple tart. It's going to look good. I don't know if this is going to be your typical maple tart, Chef, but it's going to taste good. I hope so. Thank you, Chef. When I really love something, whether it's for school or it's for cooking, I study hours every week. I'm making the Yukon wild boar. I'm gonna do pan sear it. I've never cooked wild boar before, but it's in the meat family, and I know meat. Come on, baby, come on, baby. Closer, closer, closer. 30 minutes! You have 30 minutes left, come on! Hi there, Veronica. Hello, Chef. Now, tell me, what dish are you cooking for us? I'm going to do a seared Arctic char with pickerel stock, with clams, and making some potatoes, carrots, and I'm going to throw some squash in there in the last minute. Sounds like you've got a lot going on. I always seem to. I'll go big or go home. Good luck. It's really good. I am making a wild boar in honor of my father. He loves steak and potatoes, so I'm just going to do my own take on that. At home, I do all of the cooking. My parents separated when I was 16 years old, and I took it upon myself to put on the mom shoes. I'm here to win Master Chef Canada so I can make sure my father retires and my brothers have a good life. Vince, you work very clean. Yeah, kind of driven that way. Yeah? Got a lot at home in the family. I got to keep things in order, otherwise it all goes to chaos. I have two sets of twins, four daughters, and they are the best thing ever in my life. What are you making exactly? I'm making clams in uh, just a classic white wine sauce, some tomatoes, some fresh herbs, some shallots. Just clams, only clams? Just clams. I'm gonna make it pretty, I'm gonna make it worth it. All right, keep going. For sure, thank you. I'm making a pan-seared arctic char. I'm gonna pickle some blueberries in a screech mixture that I made, and I'm gonna make a bannock. I'm a very creative person, so with food, I consider myself a mad scientist, I guess. <laughs> I need to show the judges that I am creative and I, I deserve to be here. Sauce, come on, sauce. Five minutes! Five minutes left! Sean is making a tomato rose. Oh, he loves that, He loves he? to go back <laughs> to the old classics. Yeah, but you know what? That takes a lot of good knife skills. Oh, yeah, baby. I want that advantage, like, very badly. I feel like my flavors are good enough to get that advantage. You have one minute left. Oh, I'm worried that the judges aren't going to like my dish. It's just not coming together how I thought it would. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, go. 5, go, 4, go, 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 guys. 3, 2, 1, hands up. up. Yeah, baby! <laughs> Oh, yeah. The judges have been observing and tasting throughout the challenge. They now take one final look before choosing the most promising dishes. The winner of this mystery box will receive a huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge. The first home cook we like to call up was not afraid to take a risk. Call my name, call my name, call my name. Thinking like subliminal messages. That home cook is... Dr. Sean. Bring your dish up to the front. It's a tart with a maple pastry cream, a meringue on top, and blueberry coulis. So refresh my memory. You're not a baker, right? Never made a tart in my life. It's pretty amazing. Thank you so much. Just the way the flavors all come together. The tart is crispy. It's well balanced. It's not too sweet. Great job. Thank you so much. Chef Alvin, the man who does not like desserts. Why does everybody think I don't like desserts? <laughs> Is it because I'm not a sweet guy? <laughs> wow. 
Sean, you might have converted me. It's got very nice balance. It's sweet, but I can taste the maple. Beautifully done on pie crust, crispy. The meringue could have been improved. If you get a stiff meringue, you can probably get a bit more char in it. Overall, you deliver. You deliver. Well done. Thank you. The next home cook that we'd like to call up took a risk with some unusual flavor combinations. I feel like they're talking about me. I'm almost ready to pick up my plate. And the home cook that made that dish is... Mary. This is a pan-seared Arctic char with a blueberry wine reduction and a carrot puree. Blueberries and Arctic char. I've never had that before. It's fantastic. I love the balance that you've achieved here. The Arctic char is perfect to medium rare, and the berries cut right through that. Thank you. Mary, if this is a taste of what's to come, I'm very excited, really sincerely. Thank you so much. Presentation, I think, is outstanding. Just wonderful. This is a really well-balanced red wine sauce. You intensified those aromatic notes of the cassis, the vanilla, that work incredibly well with these wonderful East Coast blueberries from Nova Scotia. You're cooking with the mind of a chef. Thank you. The third and final home cook we're calling up used a number of ingredients in the most ambitious way. Please come to the front. Veronica. I'm excited. I had just given up hope, and then they said my name. I made a pan-seared Arctic char in a fish broth with a garnish of potatoes and wild rice. You certainly took more ingredients than anybody in this room. So let's cut into the fish. How do you like that fish? It should be medium. Well, spot on medium. Wow. Smooth, silky, crunchy, a bit of bite. It's a very, very nice combination. Thank you. I think this is a very stylish and sophisticated dish. And the fact that you use these little pommes gaufrettes as part of the garnish, wonderful. Thank you, Chef. Beautiful, moist. You let the key ingredient shine there. If I could comment one little element, maybe a little knob of ginger would have given the broth a little pop. But overall, very well executed. Thank you, Chef. Sean, Mary, and Veronica. We're going to take a moment to deliberate. I think it's really important to win the first mystery box challenge because I want to be the one to beat. Looks like we have a competition on our hands. They were three outstanding dishes. They like my food. I've got a chance. Taking risks is one thing, but at the end of the day, it's what's on the plate. I expected myself to be here, and I think I'm going to come out victorious. So I suddenly remember the ribs haven't been checked. Oh, wow. I burnt the ribs. What happened here? Look at this. What the hell? Look this has got to be a really meaningful challenge for Jeremy, because his house burned down. Can you imagine? If it wasn't for firemen who got in there and saved things, it would have been a total disaster for him. Without the firefighters, I would have lost everything in the house fire. I was able to save things that meant a lot to me. Family photos we were able to save because of firefighters. I want to feed them a good meal because they really deserve it. Michelle, do you want to taste the sauce? I want to run everything by Michelle because if, in the end, things go wrong, then I don't have to take all the blame. 
So, Sean, how much sauce are you making? I'm gonna try and get double what we have in here. Are you yeah. sure that's enough? I really hope so because we're running out of ingredients. Who's in charge of portioning this sauce? Sauce. Okay. So this is on both of you. Sauce. Yes. What if you run out? The goal is not to. Michelle. I'm embarrassed that all of this is happening in front of Chef Claudio. Who's in charge? I'm in charge. The sauce right there, I don't think it's enough. Then we're gonna have to come up with plan B. I don't want him thinking that we made a big, giant error. I'm worried. While the blue team worries about quantity, over in the red kitchen, quality is the concern. Jeremy's working on the sauce, and I am nervous. It needs to be sweeter, Jeremy. Yeah. If the sauce isn't good, then we're screwed. It's still really mustardy, Jeremy. I know. I'm cutting it with more maple syrup. I think it's going. It's going really well, Chef. Uh, we're doing a Chinese dry rub with uh, a whiskey barbecue oh, sauce. Yeah. Want to taste our sauce, Chef? OK. Mm. I like that sauce. Thank you, Chef. And I love whiskey. <laughs> We've made this dish for you, Chef. Thank you very much. <laughs> and for the firefighters. Of course, the firefighters are more important. OK, good luck. The sauce is a really intricate part of what's going to make us win today. Jeremy, that's bomb. The red team may be happy with their sauce, but the blue team is still struggling. We have two batches of sauce, and we got the taste spot on for the first one. Now I have to replicate that on the second one. Balance out the tomato flavor. It's, it's a little overbearing. More molasses. We'll get there. As Sean works on the sauce, the rest of the blue team tackles the side dishes. We're making peppers stuffed with cornbread. I don't know how many peppers there are. We need 121 portions. We have 51 halves. Quantity of peppers versus the amount of people that we have to feed, it doesn't add up. We don't have enough peppers. What are we going to do? I'm stressed. At this point, I'm stressed out. I got too much shit on my plate. 20 minutes! Matthew, do you want me to go on these? No, 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 do not open these. I'm telling you, you should look at them. You should look no, at them. No, we're not looking at them. Sean Hickey wants to open up those smokers. Do it, just do it. No, oh I can't, I can't. So even though Sean is really trying to muscle in, Matthew is not letting him do it. I'm dying to get over to that barbecue. If you open that smoker, you're going to rob the smoker of all the heat. The smell alone is calling to me. Sean, come check the ribs. I'm telling you, you should look at them. You should look no, at them. No, we're not looking at them. Matthew's the leader. Whatever he wants to do, we do. Despite what Matthew says, I crack, I check the ribs. Shut the lid. Just shut it. Oh my god. Our smokers have just dropped a good 15 to 20 degrees. And our ribs won't be as tender as they should be. We could lose this. Hey, man, we're following instructions too, right? You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. While Matthew may have lost control in the red kitchen, Michelle's now dealing with the fact that the blue team doesn't have enough peppers to stuff. Change of plans, OK? okay. We don't have enough peppers. I'm thinking we're going to take the cornbread and make a hash out of it instead. This way we can ensure everyone gets fed and everyone gets equal portions. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Let's go, yeah, let's go guys. Let's go. Guys. Let's go. Vince, you're working on that slaw, right? I made a radicchio red onion slaw with olive oil and red wine vinegar. It's too bitter. You decide, man. I got to shut Vince's coleslaw down. I know this coleslaw isn't going to go well with the ribs. We're not going to do the slaw idea. We only need two sides. We got the corn bread, yeah. we got the squash. We're going to do a vegetable medley with sweet potatoes, green beans, and squash. Vince is a good team player, and he's going to do the sweet potatoes. The red team side dishes may be under control, but there's still the matter of their undercooked ribs. There is nothing I can do about that lost heat. Get that sauce caramelized onto the meat ASAP. So we just have to improvise. We have to make sure that those ribs are going to taste as beautiful as possible because they're not going to be as tender as we can make them now. Five minutes left. You should be plating now. The stations are set up. The servers are there. So I suddenly remember the ribs haven't been checked. Oh, wow. I burnt the ribs. What happened here? Look at this. What the hell? Look at that, guys. You can't even serve that. Oh, my god. Michelle, who was in charge of watching the uh, smokers here? It was my fault. This is on the brink of disaster. Sean, I need you over here ASAP. On the ribs, it's all hands on deck. We're pulling them out. We're picking which ones aren't burnt. I just went into the blue kitchen, and the ribs are burnt. How many are burnt, guys? Eight, nine racks. We're not going to have enough. It could cost us the entire challenge. The firefighters are arriving. 121 firefighters. Look at all the firefighters. Oh, my god. I'm feeling really, really hot. I'm feeling like I might need a firefighter. 
firefighter to come over here and hose me down. Knowing that I'm serving firefighters definitely amps up the stakes for me. I want them to see love and respect through our food. The firefighters are ready to eat, and they are hungry. Welcome, your Grecian firefighters. It's a privilege to have you all with us. MasterChef Canada would like to honor your bravery and commitment and serve you a wonderful lunch. I have a lot of respect for them and what they do. They put their lives on the line every single day for everybody else's safety. Firefighters. <laughs> Coming through with the ribs. These are good. This needs to be served. These are not birds, guys. These are not fucking birds. We haven't lost as many as we thought. Touch them up with sauce real quick. There, sauce. guys. Sauce. Sauce them, you guys. I need sauce on these ribs right now. It's going to be really tight. I really hope that we can get the ribs on the 121st plate. Let's go, guys. Faster, faster. They're coming fast, guys. Let's go. We just need to get these out there, you guys. We need to do a conveyor belt, or we're not going to keep up to service. We're so close. Almost there, guys. You guys, we're doing a really good job. Keep up this momentum, OK? No. Stretch. We're done. Oh. Now it's up to the firefighters. The 121 firefighters have received two plates. The red team's Chinese five spice ribs with a whiskey barbecue sauce, sauteed vegetables, and jalapeno cornbread. And the blue team's hickory smoked ribs with a tangy tomato barbecue sauce, a vegetable medley, and cornbread hash. After lunch, the firefighters will cast their vote for the rib meal they like the best. Bon appetit. You know what? We didn't run out of anything. That's amazing. I don't care. I'd rather have more than not enough. Absolutely. Blood, sweat, and tears, literally, eh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Blood, just sweat, made and it. Tears. Just made it. So which team do you think stood out? I prefer the red plate. It has a good spice. The blue plate, it came a little burnt. I think I like the blue a little bit more. A little bit of the sweet flavor. We found these ones actually undercooked. The red team, the ribs were under? Slightly. So which one do you like? I prefer the red one. Just prefer the overall sauce, the uh, smokiness. Now how about you? The blue plate seems like they were cooked a little bit longer, easier to eat, more tender. For me, it's the blue. The red team's ribs. Minor top. Thank you everyone for joining us today. We'll ask you to vote for the team whose rib lunch you enjoyed the most. We worked really, really, really hard together as a team, and I want this victory very badly. I'm really confident that we're gonna win. I know our flavors are there. The only thing is, since Sean opened those smokers, I'm just so worried that the ribs were not tender. With the last firefighter vote cast, it's time to announce the winner. You just served two delicious rib lunches to 121 firefighters. Both teams did an incredible job. Red team, your spicy rib sauce got rave reviews. Blue team, the firefighters found your ribs to be beautifully tender. Yes. But as you know, each firefighter had to vote for the team and plate they liked the best. 20 votes separated the winner from the loser. Are you ready to find out the results? Yes, sir. Yes. The winning team that will automatically move into the top 12 is Oh. Come on, Blue. Come on, Blue. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Really, really don't want to do the pressure test. Come on, Blue. <laughs> we did it! We won! We won the first team challenge. We had to make one of the hardest decisions we've ever faced. Tonight, the weakest cook was... Mary, please bring up your dish. It's a steelhead trout and a brown butter cauliflower mash. What are you thinking right now? 
I think the flavors are there. The plating is not what I wanted. Hmm. Why is it so lumpy? The cauliflower wouldn't puree the, the way I wanted it to. It's not so good. It doesn't have the sophistication that I would hope to see from you. The only thing that can give you a safe haven here is the fish. I know. What is this here? There's a pin bone. A bone in your fish is a big no-no. I really, I truly apologize. Maybe five minutes in, I started feeling frazzled. This was a game of strategy, as well as cooking. You know what I think? I think Jennifer and Terry want you out. You know that? I do. You think that's gonna happen here? I really hope not. I don't wanna go home. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, this fish is not pink in the middle. It could be a real shame for you. That's about as good as it gets, Mary. Thank you. <laughs> it's spectacular. Thank you. I don't know if you're gonna recover, though, because the rest of the dish, it's way below your capability. I know. I am nervous. It doesn't matter how well I've done up until now. Every single time you cook in the MasterChef Canada kitchen, you need to show them that you deserve to be there. Veronica, please bring up your dish. This dish is me on a plate because it's cooking techniques that I know and love. I made a Thai-style fried red mullet with a fish dipping sauce and a papaya and carrot slaw. And what was the biggest challenge in you pulling this dish off? The biggest challenge was probably the fact that I only have one fish. One chance to get it right. <laughs> Correct. Red mullet is a delicate, sweet, gentle fish. I'm a little surprised that you put it up against such a, a big, almost fiery sauce. It's almost counterintuitive. Oh. But it works. Thank you, chef. Sweet, acidic, but very complimentary. And what I see here is nothing short of a love affair with food. That's the Veronica that we want to see. Thank you, chef. This is Typical Asian, using every single part of the fish. You make good use of the bone, and I'm just gonna dig into that. This is exactly how I would have done it. I am so happy to see you finally bring out the Asian in your cooking. I'm happy to see you happy. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Jeremy, please bring up your dish. It's called sinigang. It's monkfish with a tamarind and tomato broth with a lot of Asian vegetables, Chinese eggplant, bok choy, and broccoli. Jeremy. Chef. Do you think Terry and Jennifer was trying to sabotage you with the monkfish? Of course they were. I hope that they didn't hit the mark. You know, in the Philippines, they use really cheap cuts of fish to make that dish. But did you know the monkfish is called the poor man's lobster? No. You should not use the monkfish for this particular dish. It's too refined, it's too good. That's like using filet mignon in a stew. <clears throat> I think it needs a little bit more complexity in the dish. You probably could have kept it on the bone. That would have done nicely. It would provide even more flavor. Yeah. I am a little bit disappointed, but it's nicely cooked. Mm -hmm. Sean, please bring up your dish. It's important to wow people with a plate, and that's what I try and do on every dish I make. Got a baked sturgeon on a crust with a citrus wine butter sauce, red jasmine rice, and sauteed green and yellow beans with bacon. When I came to visit you at the cook station, you were hoping to make a rose. It's not quite a rose. It's more like a roll. <laughs> no, I don't think the rose quite uh, bloomed, did it? No, it didn't make it. I 
I don't know whether it's beginner's luck or not, but that piece of sturgeon is about as perfectly cooked as I think anyone could get it. It's the plating and the choice of some of the ingredients that you need to work on. Look at the size of the spoonful of rice. It's bigger than the fish. The beans, the way they're sort of spread out like that, it's about restraint. It's about elevating and adding some sophistication, polish and refinement to a dish. This doesn't hit that mark. It's well done or medium rare? <laughs> this is something that I just, I don't understand it. You wanna have a food truck, right? Absolutely. If you don't start to focus a little bit more, you might not be in the food truck. You might be just doing service on it. I don't think I cut it. We've tasted all your dishes, and now we need to take a few moments to discuss. Okay. Wow, that was unpredictable. One minute, you're on top, and the next, you might be going home. There were some badly conceived ideas. I hate it when they don't respect the product. Because they have some beautiful fish. I want to taste the fish. I'm pretty scared that this could be the end of my journey. I think I'm in trouble. This competition's going to change dramatically right now. It could be quite the upset. You are all asked to create a stunning dish starring the beautiful fish that Terry and Jennifer gave you. Two of you hooked us with amazing creations. The first great dish was made by a home cook who often doubted their abilities. But tonight, they served a beautifully plated dish that blew the competition out of the water. And the home cook that we're talking about is... Jacqueline. Congratulations. I'm so happy. It's really unbelievable what I've accomplished so far and the confidence that I'm building here. And now for the best dish of the night. It was made by a home cook who experienced a bit of a turning point. Tonight, they wowed us with a dish that came straight from their heart. Congratulations, Veronica. This means so much to me. It's just nice to hear positive feedback about what I just consider a regular dinner at my house. I'm just trying to show them who I am. You'll both be captains on the next team challenge. And now, for some news that's harder to swallow. Tonight, we will only be calling up two home cooks. Both struggled to keep their heads above water. Sean and Mary, please come forward. I still have some fight left in me. I don't quit, I don't give up. I love my family and I miss them so much, but this is where I want to be right now and I need to stay here. Both of you bring so much heart to this competition and so much willingness to learn. But tonight, the components on your plate overshadowed your beautifully cooked fish. And as a result, we had to make one of the hardest decisions we've ever faced. Tonight, the weakest cook was... Sean. Oh, my God. <gasps> you give it. You got it. It's OK. It's OK. It's OK. Mary, please head back to your station. I'm feeling relieved, I'm feeling scared. I need to try harder, and I'm so ready to do that. Sean, you may work on an auto assembly line, but your cooking is anything but mass produced. And although we're going to miss those funny little garnishes, we are sure that your wife and family will be delighted to have you home. Now come up here and say goodbye. You got it. Thanks, guys. It's a dream come true. All I ever wanted was to be on MasterChef Canada and get an apron, and it happened. Come up and grab your apron. Yeah!
the best thing I'm taking away from this competition is knowing that I have what it takes to be a great cook. Proof is in the pudding. Oh my God, they're so good. That brings a smile on my face. Oh man. <laughs> It's bittersweet. You take the apron off, you lay it down, you know your journey here is done, but I get to go back to my family. Every single one of you are winners. I love you guys. I'm not giving up on my food truck dreams. They're just gonna take a little bit longer. You don't look exactly over the moon. Why is that? I think it's a little undercooked in the center. So you think it's uncooked. Let me see. This is top 10. Raw cheesecake can send me home. Inside this crate is the incredible, versatile ingredients that everybody will be working with today. Everybody except you, Veronica. Hi, right, Veronica. Take a look inside. Veronica looks like she's shocked about what's in the box. What's in there? I'm freaking out. Veronica, this versatile ingredient can be used to make a variety of incredibly delicious dishes. And we're supplying you with two versions of it. One fresh and one canned. Your second advantage is that you get to pick who will cook with a fresh ingredient and who will cook with the canned. Veronica, do you have a strategy in mind? Yes, I do. I like seeing people perform at their best, so I'm going to assign people what I think they'll be good at. My dad raised me to battle with the best. If someone falls off in the end, it's because they were outcooked. Do you know which home cooks you'll be assigning the canned ingredient to? Yes, I do. Then please go hand these cans to them. to you, sir. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> Veronica has let us all know that she's playing up to our strengths. I'm like, what the heck? I'm a canned food cook? Thanks, buddy! Your mystery ingredients, whether it's fresh or canned, must be the star of your dish. Are you ready to find out what that ingredient is? Yes, yes chef! Head to the pantry. Because your time starts now! Oh my god! <gasps> oh my god! Pumpkin! I love pumpkin! <laughs> Wowzers, oh I did not god. see that coming. I've never cooked pumpkin in my life, so I'm definitely nervous. I have a lot running through my head right now. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with a fresh pumpkin. Eggs, cornstarch. Oh. I truly believe Veronica wants people to excel. But canned pumpkins aren't really my thing. If I just had a raw pumpkin, I would have a whole plethora of ideas. Um... Idea right here? I would be delighted to have a fresh pumpkin. I would be doing something grilled, something poached in a little miso. I think it just allows you to do a little bit more with it than just something that is more of a puree base. You know, pumpkin is a very delicate vegetable. It's very easy to overpower it. So I would be happy if I got the can. The flavor concentrates, so it's actually almost, in some cases, a superior version to the fresh. Gonna need a can opener because I got some canned pumpkin today to work with. Veronica. I don't think April Lee realizes that I was trying to help her. Canned pumpkin has a real punch, whereas the fresh pumpkin is very subtle. I'm not mad at Veronica for giving me the fresh pumpkin, because I'm, I'm screwed either way. I don't know my way around pumpkin other than Halloween, so I'm pretty nervous. It's a really difficult fruit to work with. I think it's a fruit, vegetable. What is it? Hi there, Terry. Hi, Chef Michael. <laughs> so you found yourself at the pumpkin patch? I did, Chef. Have you worked with pumpkins before? I work a lot with pumpkins. We used to grow pumpkins behind our backyard. Oh, back home in Nigeria? Back home in Nigeria. <laughs> oh, beautiful. So what are you cooking for us? I'm making a pumpkin risotto. It's a meal I make a lot for my friends and family, and they all love it. It's going to be amazing if it turns out the way I want it to. 
It's coming along. It's coming along. It's about those layers of flavors. Thanks, Chef. I'm making a pumpkin cheesecake. For some reason, when I saw the canned pumpkin, I knew I had to go baking, and this is the first thing that popped into my head. Jacqueline is blitzing down pumpkin seeds, and she is making a pumpkin seed crust. Brilliant. I'm not ready to go home yet, so I just need to make this work. Bake, baby, bake. I'm making a pumpkin squash soup. I have some apple. I have some apricot flavoring. I don't know if the flavors are going to work. I've never cooked in an elimination challenge. I've been pretty lucky with that. I have no idea if this dish is going to be enough to keep me here. I'm fighting for my life. Wow, there's a lot of activity happening here, Mary. What are you making? I'm making a pumpkin gnocchi with a blue bechamel. I'm not putting potato in there because I want to keep the pumpkin flavor up front. Sounds actually quite ambitious. We'll see. <laughs> you think Veronica gave you uh, a gift? I do think she gave me a gift. OK. Five minutes, you have five minutes left. <sighs> I know pumpkin is very fibrous, so I'm blending that puree like mad. I want to bring out the flavors of pumpkin because that's got to be the star of the show. Oh, God. Jacqueline is the only one doing the dessert. She's making a cheesecake, right? Yes. Is it going to set in time? A risky move. I want this more than anything, but I'm never going to give up. One minute! You have one minute left! Oh, my gosh. My salt. Where's my salt? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and stop! Wow. <sighs> Dr. Sean, please bring up your pumpkin dish. I look down at my dish, and I'm a little worried that it's not very gourmet. It's a pumpkin puree soup flavored with apple, ginger, sage, and uh, pumpkin crostini. Very interesting. All right, let's taste. Wow. I like it. You had the right amount of pumpkin, right amount of stock, and the apple complements it beautifully. You honor the pumpkin. And I like that. Thank you very much, Chef Alan. It's full, it's luxurious, and very fresh tasting. Just looking at the soup, how beautiful and bright that is. How smooth that is. Beautiful, beautiful soup. From its color, to its taste, to its texture. Thank you so much, Chef. This is a pumpkin gnocchi with a blue cheese bechamel and crispy sage. All right, so let me try it. You have the liver. You know, you have the sweetness from the pumpkin in the gnocchi. You have the saltiness coming from the crispy panchanta. And the blue cheese, just that umph. Nothing's overpowering each other. You know, I love these little orange gnocchis because when I see them, it reminds me of pumpkin. I'm gonna say, you deliver what we wanted. Thank you, Chef. Definitely what I wanted. <laughs> Thank you. Jacqueline, please bring up your pumpkin dish. The challenge was to honor the pumpkin, and I think I've done that in the flavors. I hope it's enough. It's a pumpkin cheesecake with a pumpkin seed crust, blackberry coulis, and a blackberry chantilly cream. You don't look exactly over the moon. Why is that? I think it's a little undercooked in the center. So you think it's uncooked. Let me see. as bad as you think, but I would say slightly undercooked. Okay. This really tastes like pumpkin. You know what impressed me the most is your crust. I think it's a fantastic idea to make good use of the pumpkin seed. Terry, please bring up your dish. I almost went home last week, and if I don't blow them off their feet today, I could be on my way back home. 
I made a roasted pumpkin risotto with a freshly grated Parmigiano Reggiano and about a pinch of freshly grated nutmeg. So, Terry. Yes, Chef. You got the fresh pumpkin. I did, Chef. Did that make you happy? It did make me happy, Chef. The pumpkin flavor is there. There's a little texture from the sofrito there. It's an interesting dish to look at. The flavors are complex. It's a great risotto. You know what you're doing. Thank you, Chef. That was a tough challenge, and the results were mixed. We'll start at the top end of the spectrum. The best dish of the night was made by... Sean. Congratulations, Sean. I'm thinking that the other home cooks are finally starting to realize that I'm a bit more of a threat. The second best dish was made by a home cook who's developing a bit of a reputation. Mary, you did it again. Me! I'm second! I feel amazing! And tonight, there was a third dish that deserved special recognition. Terry. I'm here to win this competition, and I'm glad I'm finally getting the recognition I crave. Congratulations. All three of you will be captains in our next team challenge. <laughs>